welcome to Earth Engine tutorial episode 42. In this video, I'm going to show you how to develop on Earth Engine app that allow users to upload data and also display the data on the interactive map. Okay, let's get started. Uh, first of all, you need to download the, the GMAP uh, package and also the Jupyter Notebook. And you can go to the gmap.org and from there you can click the github uh, icon and we're going to go to examples notebooks scroll down and find number 42 and from here you can click the raw button and then right click save as you can download this one to your uh, computer uh, i'm going to put into the downloads folder and from there you should be able to see uh, the notebook on your computer and then you can open your um, terminal activate the conda environment so i'm going to activate conda activate ge and then you can type a uh, jupyter notebook P -O -I -T -R. <laughs> and open the jupyter on your browser okay and uh, so we are going to click the notebook uh you and let me maximize the notebook and here is the source code so we are going to go through the source code step by step uh, but first let's execute the notebook and to see what the final output uh, looks like so you can click uh, restart and run all and uh, take a look and from here you can see the uh, final output and you can hide the source code uh, this is a jupyter notebook extension so if you want you can install uh, the jupyter notebook uh, extension and from on the map here uh, low right corner you should be able to see this one um, you can upload your data and then display the data and then reset so uh, you can also click the layer control to turn layer on and off the layer here this one is from the uh, earth engine data catalog but uh, we're going to display some vector data you can click the button uh, upload data and then from here you can find some data on your local computer so this app only supports uh, vector data so you need to have a, a swap file or a geojson uh, for a swap file you need to um, com compress all the files as a single uh, zip file and then you can upload this one or you can use a geojson so um, if you don't have any data on your computer, you can go to my the other repo. Uh, I have the other one uh, data, and so I have some example data in here. If you want, you can uh, clone the repo. Uh, all you need to do is just uh, go here and then uh, download it as a zip file. Or if you know how to use Git, you can uh, get clone to your uh, computer. Once you have the data, uh, so in this case, I have the data uh, already downloaded on my computer uh, under the downloads folder. So next we can uh, use some of the data to uh, test this uh, web app. And so first I'm going to click the upload data button and then go to data. So first I'm going to add, uh, the, for example, the country's uh, boundary. You can click the zip file or you can click a geojson. Either one is fine. Uh, and let's click this one. So once it's clicked, you will see here right now you have a parenthesis number one. So that means you already select uh, one data layer and then you can click this one display data before you do that i'm going to show you in here right if you see my downloads folder right now i have nothing so essentially if this is an app that you deploy to uh, a web server it's going user going to select and then upload the data so now the data is uh, uh, already uploaded and so next we just need to display the data so uh, it's going to unzip the uh, the zip file and then get the uh, the swap file and then display on the map so let's click uh, display data and then now you see so automatically it's going to create a temporary folder uh, with the name of the the zip file and then also three random uh, characters and inside uh, if there's a zip file we are going to find whether it, it contains a swap file or a geojson so in this case uh, we find the swap file first so once we find this one then you can display that on the map so if you zoom in zoom out this is the the country boundary for the uh entire globe and if you want you can 
activate the inspector click on the map and you should be able to query the data for example the dm and also uh, the country the name of the country and for any location so this is the first one we're using the drip, uh, ship, uh, zip file and contains a, a swap file you can also display geojson so uh, the next let's do something else we're going to click the uh, us data folder and we're going to select for example us uh, state geojson so once you click open again you need to click the display button so now we have two data layers okay the second one here is the uh, us state and as you can see from here each layer has a layer name also three random uh, characters and again we can click on the map uh, to take a look so now we should have the uh, dm um, the the countries and also uh, the state um, lastly we're going to add uh, another one uh, they say uh, us uh, cities uh, geojson click open display the data and this one you will see here um, it's uh, the point data layer so we have three data layers you can turn them on and off lastly if you want to start from the very beginning you can click the reset uh, reset uh, button so this one will clear all the data layers so if you hit reset now all the data layers are gone uh, except the one that we are uh, the dm data layer that we want to keep okay so this is a simple demo um you can customize this one to uh, allow users to upload other data set it can be raster it can be uh, csv it can be anything so this is the way how you can enable your uh, python uh, web app to allow users to upload our data so next uh, i'm going to go through the source code quickly uh, to show you like how we can develop something like this uh, this is the key part um, this uh, 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 ipy widget and then the ipy widget are added to the map and then from there you can interact with the uh, the widget so let's go through the source code uh, first you need to import the libraries then we can create the interactive map from there we uh, add uh, earth engine data layer so we only add uh, one data layer this is the dm and then we customize how we want to display the dm and then we add the dm to the other uh, map so this is by default what you see when the map is created and so next how can we create a widget uh, like this so essentially this is a widget a output a widget uh, if you want to learn more about how to create this you can check out my previous tutorial how to add an interactive widget uh, to the map so you create the output widget and then you use this one as a widget uh, control then you can add the widget control to the map okay so uh originally it's, it's going to be empty maybe let me uh clear the output and then start from the very beginning uh, you will understand what i'm talking about so i'm going to execute and uh, sale one or above <laughs> and you will see this one is already executed but right now it has nothing so if you see from here it's supposed to be added to the bottom right corner but because we haven't added anything to the output widget you can see the output widget just as a container so you can you can print things to the container you can also uh, plot uh, chart or other things to uh, the output widget so it's a very uh, powerful one and now it is empty so next we can add three um, widgets so the first one is the uploader so you, when the user click um, the button it's going to allow them to uh, upload so this is a so-called fly upload uh, widget and you can create a filter so you only allow user to upload a zip file or a geojson or, or, or json file and so this is the first button the second one is actually just a button so this is the file upload it looks like a button but you can actually allow users to transfer data from their computer uh, to the web and the second and the third one these are the two uh, regular buttons and so once the user click the button it's going to execute something if we hit one nothing happens because right now we only define um the, the widget and then like i said earlier the output widget is just a container so we can print things to the widget we can also display widget so it can be nested within um the output widget once we execute if we go back to see here now we have this right so you will see here the first one 
This is where we print uh, the uh, description to the widget and also three buttons. Right now, if you click, um, it it won't do anything. So although you, the uh, uh, upload widget you can select, but it's not going to do anything because the data is being uploaded. But when you click the display, uh, it's doing nothing because we haven't added uh, actions to uh, uh, to the button yet. So this is the key part, right? We can only define a function, and the input is the an output widget, and also you can change the output directory. So what this one is doing is we're going to pass in the uploader widget and from there we're going to extract the data from the widget. So think about when the user click, let me reset, uh, it's nothing here. So when the user click the upload data button and the data is already uploaded, but we need to extract the data. So that function essentially extract the data from the widget. And if you see from this one here, right, if you don't set an output directory, by default it's going to use your downloads directory and so how can you get the content from the up, uh, upload widget there's a value called uh, the property called uh, widget dot value so once the user click the up, uh, file upload and then select something the file is automatically uploaded to the widget and then we're going to retrieve the value from the widget so we use the dot value and then you can use the let the few lines in here. So this one actually extract the content and then also save the content to the output folder. Okay, so it's going to in here number one. So we upload the data, and the data right now is already there. We just need to retrieve the content, and then the next step is to unzip the data and then display it on the map. So this is the function, right? If there's a zip file, we're going to go through. And also going to find out whether it's a swap file or it's a geotation. So we're going to look for a swap file first, uh, because for swap file you need to um, compress and then use it as a swap file. But for geotation you can directly upload as a geotation, or you can compress the geotation file and then upload as a zip file. So it's up to you. Once we have the file, then we're going to use the uh, gmap function to convert the swap file to Earth Engine object. Keep that in mind, the swap file only supports um, uh, WGS84, so uh, EPSG4326. So make sure you convert the data to uh, longitude and latitude WGS84 before you use uh, before you upload data. Otherwise, it might not work uh, properly. Also, uh, if the zip file um, does not contain the swap file, then uh, the program will look for geotation. And then convert the geotation to uh, OS engine object. And so, if it is not a swap file, it's going to automatically um, because if it is not a swap file, it must be a, geo, uh, a geotation. And then it's got, similarly, it's going to convert the geotation to OS engine object. Okay, so this is basically the function. And then it's going to return the vector data layer, right? So this is the input is the widget, the uh, file upload widget. And the output is the vector data, so it's the Earth engine object. It's a feature collection. And then we define the other three uh, buttons in here. So the first one is the uh, submit, right? So the submit um, is this one. So display the data and also reset. When we click the display data, then we um, extract the content, and from there we can display the data. So if you see uh, when we click. So the uploader counter counter greater than zero, right? So this is the uploader counter in here. Number one, if you if you reset, it becomes zero when it's being cleared out. And then, so this is essential, right? It is from the the first button is the file upload. So we're going to get the vector, the feature collection from the upload widget, and then we're going to have the feature collection. So from there, we can. Uh, create the data layer, uh, the layer name, a uh, random string, and also add the data layer to the map, and then uh, center object. Once you add the data to the uh, map, you want to clear the value. So essentially, you want to once you the file is being extracted, you want to clear, and then reset the counter as zero. Let me execute this one, and also execute this one. Also, you can do the reset. So if you reset uh, the the uh, the data layers uh, you only only have uh, three data layers so the base map and also the google map and also the dm data layers 
you can also clear all the outputs uh, so the and once you clear the widget you can display um those widget again and you can set um, the counter again back to uh, zero so now this come back to here uh, like i said if you reset this one is going to turn to uh, zero so if i could click right and again if i upload they say uh us uh war counting like if i select a geo station right it must be a geo station if it is a zip file the zip file can contain a swap file or a geo station so we select the geo station and then once we click display the data uh, it's going to uh, click it's going to execute this one so when we click by right, on click and then the click execute this function and because the upload account is greater than zero uh, it's going to get the visual collection and then create the data layers so if right now if you see from the downloads folder right this is these files are being uploaded to the computer and then being saved from here this is where it is being saved to the computer from there you can uh, load the data and again you can continue to um select more data layers so for example uh countries okay Click open display All right. and you can reset so this is only a demo uh, showing you how to uh, create a widget like this and then allow users to upload our data so you need to use the file upload widget so this one is essential the other two, the other two are just regular buttons and um, Again, you can if you want to allow users to upload their own CSV or points or others, you can do that as well. This is it doesn't have to be a swap file or geojson. It can be any file or type that you want, so that you can communicate between the local computer and the web server. Once the data is being uploaded, then you can do some comp uh, computing or extraction, and then to display the data, let the user upload it. Okay, that's all for this uh, tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to my channel. Hope to see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.